Hey guys, it's Kelly from Tab Performance and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about DinoJet sheets. A lot of people don't know how to read them or what they even mean, but after watching this video you'll be able to understand your dino readings and what they are good for. Okay, so a DinoJet result sheet, or Dino Sheet for short, is a special report card that provides instant insight into your bike's performance. It depicts how much horsepower and torque your bike produced during testing. But before we go any further, let's make sure everyone knows the difference between horsepower and torque because there really isn't a point about rambling on about performance outputs if you don't understand. So first, torque. Torque is defined as a twisting force that tends to cause rotation. Okay, I get that. I'm following. Whereas horsepower is a unit of power equal to 550 foot-pounds per second foot-pounds per second? What does that even mean? Simply put, torque is force and horsepower is speed. So think of it like this. Torque is how hard you hit the wall, whereas horsepower is how fast you get to the wall. In motorcycle speak, you will feel your torque, or what some people call your low-end power, when you accelerate. So you want to pop a wheelie, you're going to need torque. If you want to get up that hill easier, you're going to need torque. Whereas horsepower is if you're racing for pink slips, let's say. Do people even do that anymore? I'm not sure. But if you were, that's where you're going to need speed. Or if you're, uh, if maybe you saw the Top Gun movie this weekend, you feel the need, the need for speed, that's when your horsepower is going to come into play. So now that we know the difference between torque and horsepower, Let's take a look at that dyno sheet again. This is a dyno of my bike, Plain Jane. Jane is a 2020 Road King with a 107. She has had an intake and a tune. My dyno says that at RPMs around 3000, I get about 117 torque, which is nice because I like torque. I like beating people off the line, and I like knowing that if I have to pass a semi on Interstate 90 because he looks suspiciously off to me, that I can easily do it. Now it also says that I hit my max horsepower of 90 around 5,000 RPMs, which sounds nice, but the truth of the matter is I don't normally ride in that range, and most people don't. The average biker rides between 2.5 and 3.5 RPMs. So why would they show me that number? They show you the numbers as an estimate of what your bike can do, and there's no fault in that. But it brings me to my last point of what are dyno sheets good for. A dyno sheet is a great gauge of how good your bike can perform in optimal conditions. Please know there are many factors that affect your results, including temperature, humidity, airflow, as well as how the dyno meter is calibrated. You could test your bike at one shop and get your numbers and then go to a different shop on the same day and get a totally different set of numbers. Whomever is running your dyno machine will run several tests and take the one that has the greatest outputs. Think of it kind of like your miles per gallon uh, displayed on a window sticker of a car. That number is the very best scenario when all the stars have magically aligned and everything is perfect. And it's the same with your dyno. So knowing your numbers is important, especially if you're getting substantial work done. Everyone loves seeing their before and after comparisons, but it's not the be all end all. It's simply an estimate. At the end of the day, you ride your bike, not your dyno sheet. So put it down and go enjoy your ride. 